It is currently 4.56 a.m. Been up for about six minutes. Got all right sleep. Definitely felt myself awake a decent amount. Gotten worse nights of sleep before workouts, long runs, gotten better. So we'll see how this goes. Currently chowing down on some toast with honey on it. Just had a banana. It is looking like it's a pretty cool morning out there, which is good news. And hopefully it's cool throughout next week into the half marathon. So it's not really a weird shock to the system or it's cold and then it's all of a sudden warm again. Just trying to get used to waking up early, fueling early, and we'll probably be out there in around two hours, maybe less than two hours. So here is sort of the full nutrition plan for the run. Got 20 ounces of Tailwind, about two servings of Tailwind in that yellow bottle. And then obviously four Huma Plus gels, and then another 10 ounce bottle in my flip belt that I just kind of keep on my back. Uh, and I find that doesn't bounce around too much. So not sure I plan on bringing the flip belt for the actual race, but uh, can't hurt to practice carrying more fuel. Right. 6.50 a.m. Got Lauren on the bike here. Hi, good morning. She's barely awake, running straight to a porta potty to start this run. But yeah, got a nice flat trail for today's run instead of all the hills. So hopefully that helps. Last time I was here, it absolutely poured, but it's like 50 degrees yeah. right now. Nice and cool. Got the arm sleeves on. Hoping the weather doesn't spike up throughout the rest of the week. But yeah, this is, this is what fall fall running fall racing is all about is how today feels so plan is four miles easy five miles marathon pace one mile easy two threshold ish one mile easy five marathon pace and then cool down to 20 or 21 miles whenever lauren starts complaining for coffee so we'll see when the uh the need for breakfast starts if that's at 20, 21, or 22 miles, we'll make a decision from there. But I can see the porta potty in the distance, so the run has only begun. About three and a half miles in, the official warm up. If you want to consider four miles of warm up, it's almost done. One gel down. Plan on race day for this one to hand me a water bottle halfway through. So I'm gonna try to, on the day of the race, have a whole one of these by the halfway point. Have a whole nother one during the second half, but it's pretty cold today. I'm sweating remarkably less than I usually do. Don't envision that being too much of an issue. It's this temperature, so yeah, everything's good so far. Time to begin the marathon pace section. This trail is like a bit of a wind tunnel. It's very just long straight, but it's been pretty nice. Nice packed down gravel. Goal for marathon pace section. I don't know, to sort of ease into it. Maybe low 640s, high 630s. Honestly, whatever feels comfortable because I have to do two miles of threshold afterwards and another five miles of marathon effort. So really, really manage the effort for this. Time to buckle down.
effort. Part one is done. Five miles. Sat in like the 630s. Sort of a full range of it, but definitely picked up a, a second or two each mile. Felt smooth and very controlled the whole way. Nine miles in. Got a one mile recovery here. Just gonna do a nice jog to easy effort. And we're gonna turn around, hit hopefully two miles at sort of a low end threshold. So maybe closer to like half marathon effort, not quite 10K effort or anything like that. But yeah, feeling good so far. Anything to report, Lauren? I'm hungry. We've got hunger and we're only halfway through. It's not looking good, boys. <laughs> That's 10 miles. Two miles, like a low end threshold. Let's see if we can do this. Two miles of threshold done. Definitely low end threshold got slowed down by a bit of traffic, but so goes the world. Felt fine, definitely a step up in effort from the other ones, so another mile float jog recovery into five more miles at marathon effort, which now seem a bit more daunting than they did back at mile four. Thoughts, Lauren? Still hungry. <laughs> well, we're at 12 miles now, so. We're that much closer. Playtime's over. <laughs> back to back to marathon effort for the next five miles. There it is. Second set of five marathon effort miles. Stuck in the mid 630s, pretty much all of them. Closed it out in 631. Lauren's somewhere back there. We thought we saw a, a dog off leash that went into the woods, but may have just been going back to the farm it lives on, which is right off the trail. So hopefully she catches up soon. But yeah, got in four gels. We pretty much finished with this water bottle. Felt smooth, manageable for all those miles. Feeling good. Just beyond 18 miles right now. Got a three easy mile cool down to 21. And that'll be it. So with that long run workout wrapped up, so wraps up another week of marathon training. Definitely one that inspired some confidence. A workout like that that you just saw is one of those workouts that definitely makes you feel like you are capable of whatever goal you are setting. I was clicking off 6.30 pace or mid 6.30s pace like it was steady pace for me and my heart rate was super low for it. Granted, there were definitely cooler temperatures than there have been for the past couple of weeks, for the past couple of months. My body was definitely very happy with those cooler temperatures, but hopefully that is what race day conditions ideally look like in terms of temperature, may even be cooler. You know, that was a day in the mid fifties crept up to the low sixties by the end. And it still felt like absolute heaven compared to what I have been training in for the past eight, nine weeks. That long run workout, out. one of my best workouts of the training block one of my best long run workouts of all time honestly having two five mile blocks of marathon effort with two miles of sort of like a low end threshold sandwiched in between and still feeling that good up to the very end up till i when i hit 21 miles for the whole workout feels absolutely amazing to be able to do. So that's how my week ended. Let's take a step back and look at what the earlier parts of the week looked like. Starting with Monday, September 11th, went for a 12.37 mile run, just over 90 minutes of running, average pace of just a tick faster than seven and a half minute mile pace. This was more of a working into a steady effort. It wasn't an all out steady state type of run, but sort of progressed 
from an easier effort on an out and back route that is pretty much net downhill on the way out, net uphill on the way back. And yeah, just wanted to ease into some like moderate to steady pace on the way out, and then on the way back really work some of those hills. Then on September 12th, which was Tuesday, hit a 10 mile run at 4.50 a.m. Felt absolutely exhausted waking up that early. Again, headlamp on the whole entire time definitely getting used to some of these weekday morning runs being done in the complete pitch dark with nothing but me and some weird movements in the distance maybe an animal very cathartic very therapeutic to put that kind of effort in before 5 a.m. even strikes. Then workout Wednesday. I was gonna have to shift this workout because there were some pretty intense weather conditions forecast for this day. I'm fine, you know, running in the rain, in the pouring rain even. You've seen a workout throughout this training block that I did in the absolute pouring rain, but when it comes to like thunderstorms, lightning, that's when I like don't try to tempt fate and you know, might just shift the workout to a different day. Or if I'm able to, do it on the treadmill, but it ended up holding off a little bit. Still was a bit rainy, but warmed up two miles before doing four mile threshold tempo run with a one mile threshold then, two by 800, two by 400. So a bit of a mixed bag there, sort of trying to run fast and you know clip some quicker reps after really tiring out my legs with that four mile threshold to start. And it overall went pretty well. This was the first workout that I wore the Endorphin Pro 3s for and they felt pretty great. I wore them on like a sort of packed to loose gravel trail. Probably not like the most ideal conditions to be wearing a carbon fiber plated racer on, but I do think my marathon is gonna include some sections of like gravel trail. So if the Endorphin Pro 3, for instance, ends up being my pick for the marathon, probably good to get some experience running at pace in those. So clicked 559, 559, 602, 603. So a little bit slower towards the end of that, but for the most part, you know, every mile was in three seconds of the others. And, and that felt smooth enough then ran the one mile rep in 601 the two 800s in 544 pace 548 pace 257 and 255 respectively and then the 400s in 533 pace and 510 pace an 84 second 400 and a 79 second 400 so felt good to be running quicker again it's definitely a, like a shock to the system since the 5k training I've gotten so used to like running up to threshold speed and nothing much quicker and you can kind of get into this feeling that anything quicker than threshold feels like you are absolute sprinting but anything like at threshold or below threshold feels really comfortable and I'm trying not to get like too comfortable with running comfortably. I wanna still like push some paces in workouts cause that's inevitably gonna make everything that is slower than some of those like top end 5K, 10K pace workouts. Everything slower is gonna feel easier and easier as time goes on, especially with some higher volume. Ended up with around 12 miles on the day. On Thursday then hit a nine mile run 802 average pace, just over 70 minutes of running. Yeah, just tried to keep this one really, really easy. I think my average heart rate for this one was somewhere around 130 flat. So definitely kept this effort very easy in the Nova Blast 3s, which I'm finding I like more and more the more I run in them. I know I've like compared them to the Super Blast quite a bit. I've talked about them in comparison with that shoe and that's just like not really fair to compare a daily trainer like the Nova Blast as good as it is to as great and versatile of a shoe as the Super Blast, but definitely liking the, the Nova Blast 3 the more I run in it. And then Friday, 9.6 miles at 7.51. Average pace, again, tried to keep this effort fairly easy. That was because of course, I had that long run workout that you just watched the day after, which again, was an absolute confidence booster. Felt great to feel that good running 21 miles, two and a half hours, 706 overall pace, which again, I've talked about before, like during last year's marathon, I was on pace for a 257 finish time through, you know, 80% of the race. And then inevitably with about like five-ish miles to go, started to experience some cramps and that definitely ruined that race for me when it came to achieving my goal, but still PR'd. My overall average pace for last year's marathon in totality was the same as this run was. 
is this long run workout that you just saw at the beginning of the video, which puts things like into perspective, even when I feel a, the, not the most confident during this training block, when I feel like a little fatigued or I'm like questioning the process, whatever it might be, I see a run like that and, and I realize how sort of comfortable that felt the whole time when that was what my final race pace was last year which is just kind of crazy. Uh, and then after that long run workout, hit another nine mile run, 751 average pace in the super blasts, felt super recovered for whatever reason the day after that, and topped off the week there at a bit less than what I have been at. I hit 89 miles the week before. So this week hit 83.23 miles, a little under 10 and a half hours of running with a little under 2,400 feet of elevation gain. So a bit of a reduction in volume, time on feet and in elevation gain, which I'm not like tapering for this B race, this half marathon, which I still don't even know if I'm gonna treat as a tune-up race or as just like a structured workout in a race setting. Hurricane Lee, I believe it is, is looking to make its impact known. The Northeast section of the East Coast with the Atlantic this coming weekend, and it's looking to sort of like peak in terms of wind and rain and just everything on race day, which is just my luck when it comes to race day conditions. So I don't know how ideal the conditions are gonna be to like really gun it for a half marathon. I wish I could just get like really great conditions like I did this whole entire week when it came to every training run, but it seems like I'm just set up to have good training conditions and terrible race conditions. That's just like my fate when it comes to the running gods. So it is what it is. We'll see how that goes. Stay tuned for next week's episode. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hope you enjoyed the featured workout. We'll catch up next time. Peace.